All right. Yeah, feel free to turn off your videos. Um, okay. There we go. Can you all see my screen? Okay. Uh, great. So, uh, you know, you have my name, you have my email address um, and, and my office location. I'm in Lindquist Hall in 608A. Um, and um, the easiest way to reach me is through email. So um, my first name dot last name at wichita.edu. Uh, my office hours are immediately after this class between 11 and 12 um, via Zoom. Um, and, I, you know, um, I think I put up the the link to the office hours on um, Blackboard as well, but I can, you know, and it's already in the syllabus, but I can also send that to you as an email uh, if that's easy, um, you know, to kind of click and look, bookmark the, um, the Zoom link. So I can do that um, at the end of the class. Uh, the, the class that's been assigned to us is in Lindquist Hall. It's on the third level. It's uh, classroom three, two, four, but we are going to be meeting um, via Zoom unless I tell you uh, to come to class. So uh, please don't go to class unless I tell you otherwise. Uh, we will meet between 9.30 and 10.45 on Tuesdays and uh, Thursday uh, morning. So uh, I'm not going to be going over a lot of verbiage here. Uh, this is, you know, the template that the university asked us to do, uh, but um, let's go through the main important uh, points for this class. So the, the course description is rather kind of, you know, uh, broad. Um, it's, it's a nature of language class. It's a hundred level nature of language class, but I really want to make it, um, you know, the way that I do nature of language is in two different parts. So in the first part of the class, I will give you what I call the toolkits of linguistics, because when you're doing linguistics, you need to know how do you represent uh, sounds uh, in the language, whether in English or your own um, language or you know, any other language that you know? So we will go over things like, you know, very briefly, the International Phonetic Alphabet that I, you know, I also teach in 315, but I will kind of give you the basics in 151, kind of like to have a foundation and a building block. Um, we will go over morphology. So how do you take two different words in blend it and put it together and create a bigger word. Um, how do we understand meaning? Like what's the semantic aspect of, you know, putting together different morphemes and different uh, words and creating new words, etc. So we will look at the toolkits in the first half of the class. And the second half of the class is entirely dedicated to the interdisciplinary nature of linguistics. So what can we learn about linguistics uh, in connection with anthropology? What can we learn about linguistics in connection with psychology and philosophy and computational linguistics and um, you know, engineering and all that kind of uh, cool interdisciplinary uh, work that linguists are gonna do? We will talk a, a little bit about sign language. Um, and you know, there are a lot of people on this call who clearly know a lot more about sign language than me. So you know, uh, we could maybe even switch things up a little bit and maybe you could, you know, um, share what you know about sign language uh, to everybody. Um, we will talk about animal communication. Uh, we will talk about language as intersecting with music and mathematics and all that uh, sort of stuff. So that, so it's a really kind of broad introduction to language and linguistics. Um, but we will start with the toolkits because I think it's really important for you to have the toolkits in order to create your own language, which is the final project of this class. So these are the me measurable learning uh, outcomes for this class. Um, understand the structure and nature of language. Um, what is language? What do we mean by language? Uh, what is the grammar of language? What are the different kinds of rules of language, et cetera? Uh, we will look at the uses of language in different disciplines. And, you know, from the introduction in this class, you can see that there are people from all sorts of majors and minors in this class. So that's the really interesting thing about uh, linguistics and language. Um, it, it's really broad. And I think it's one of the aspects that connects all of us as humans. We all speak language. Um, so we will look at that. Uh, we will uh, create our own uh, language. Each of you will create your own individual uh, language. And you will develop an appreciation for the interdisciplinary nature of language um, and get hands-on experience using language as a tool. Uh, there are there is no required textbook for the class uh, because I really want this class to be hands on. Uh, I will be giving you readings to supplement uh, material that we're doing in class. So uh, if you want to uh, read a book, Stephen Pinker's Language Instinct uh, is a really great book. Um, 
there are copies available in the library. So if you want to, uh, you know, pick that up, um, that would be a great uh, book to do like a casual reading uh, for this class. But there is no required textbook. Um, and I, I'm a strong believer that textbook costs are really prohibitive uh, for a lot of students. So I will provide materials as we go along um, the semester. So um, I'm assuming that you all have access to a laptop. If you don't, let me know. Um, the library used to rent out laptops um, as we pivoted to COVID two years ago, but I'm not sure if they still do it. But you know, uh, I'm sure there are resources at Wichita State um, where you can rent a laptop, and I will uh, find those resources for you if you have uh, issues with you know laptop or computer access uh, to this class. Um, so it's an online class, at least uh, for now. Um, and I really like an interactive class. So, you know, um, I might call upon you um, um, for an answer or, you know, if you have something, feel free to interrupt me and ask me a question or raise your hand. Um, I will do my best to call on people if you raise your hands, but because I'm screen sharing, I might not be able to see that. So feel free to interrupt me as I'm speaking. I really like an interactive class. Uh, this is not just me lecturing to you. So, uh, you know, feel free to interrupt me uh, while I go um, along this uh, semester. Um, if you want to contact me, please give me your um, the course name and subject line in the subject line of the email because I teach multiple classes in a semester. So um, it's easier if I know which class you belong to so that I know what question and you know uh, how to answer your question. Um, always email me from your WSU email addresses. I have had students who have emailed me from uh, Gmail and Hotmail and they have gone to spam and I haven't been able to respond back to them. So. Um, Microsoft Outlook uh, tends to treat other um, email addresses as spam sometimes. It's unfortunate, but uh, try to use your WSU email address as much as you can. Um, always, you know, um, email etiquette is really important, right? I mean, um, have an opening line and have a closing line, etc. You know all this, but you know, it's it's there in the syllabus if you need a uh, you know, if you if you need reminding, uh, if you have any problems with accessing Blackboard, uh, such as Blackboard is not opening or some uh, content is um, not opening, etc., please contact One Stop for that. Um, just open a ticket with them, and they should be able to help you out. Um, I will not be able to help you out with any. Uh, tech support because I don't have the ability to do that. Uh, but obviously, if I say that there is an assignment that's been posted on Blackboard and you can't find that assignment, that question should come to me because you know that's probably um, a button on my end that I might have to press to um, have that shared with you. So uh, questions such as that can come to me, but any other tech support should go to one stop. Uh, and I've given you their phone number as well as um, their website. So you can click on that and fill in a um, ticket and they should be able to help you uh, pretty much. They're really quick um, within 24 hours, I think is what they, um, the response time is. My response time is also 24 hours. Um, I'm not traveling currently because of COVID, but uh, if, if I do um, attend a conference, conferences are all happening virtually as well. Um, you know, um, I will let you know. Uh, but I also want to let you know that I have two unvaccinated children at home under the ages of four. Um, so, um, you know, last week my 16-month-old son was uh, under quarantine at home because his teacher tested positive at daycare. So, you know, in situations such as that, um, um, I, I, you know, urge you to show me some grace uh, if I cannot respond back within 24 uh, hours. It's not that I'm ignoring your email. It's just that maybe there is something that I need to attend to at home just because, you know, um, with COVID, things have been a little um, difficult um, over the last um, two years or so with children. So um, I thank you for that in advance, but uh, rest assured, I will respond to you. Okay, just maybe it might take a little bit over um, 24 hours. Um, feedback on assignments is, is also very similar. So if you have an assignment that's due um, on Thursday of this week, um, I will give you feedback before Tuesday of uh, next week so before the next class that's kind of my timeline on assignments as well uh, the grading scale that i use for this class is pretty standard anything above a 93 gets an a um, and then it 
it goes into A minus B plus B, et cetera. If you've taken a class with me before, you should be familiar with this. Um, and this is pretty, I think, standard um, across other classes at Wichita State. I like to let you know where you stand in class. So I will keep updating your gradebook on Blackboard. Um, so you know where you will stand, you, you will see a weighted total um, out of 100, so it's a percentage. Um, so depending on the percentage, you will kind of see, um, you know, where you're going to be standing in this class. And I think that's really important. Um, you know, very often all of you tend to do really well in this class, but uh, I think it's really important to see where you stand uh, throughout the semester. So I will up, update Blackboard with your assignments. Uh, et cetera. So that's really important for you to kind of uh, monitor as the semester progresses. Um, the, the course requirements for this class is you are going to have 30% of your grade come from assignments. And these are going to be uh, take home assignments, six take home assignments. You will uh, each get one week to complete your assignments. So if I give you an assignment today, uh, it's going to be due next Tuesday. So you get one week uh, to do the assignment. Um, the assignments, uh, you know, I've given you a wide range of assignments over here, but uh, most of the assignments are geared towards your final project, which is your constructed language, your, the language that you're going to create. So I want to help you get there. How am I going to get you, uh, you know, help you get there? By giving you shorter assignments and shorter tasks to do throughout the semester so that, you know, you're not creating an entire language from scratch two weeks before the end of the semester, right? That's not going to happen. So throughout the semester, we are going to be working towards that one goal, your language, right? So uh, a couple of the assignments will be, uh, you know, uh, create some words in the language, uh, choose a prompt. Um, so, uh, you know, I will give you two different prompts and ask you to choose from those two different prompts, uh, depending on whether you like uh, science fiction or fantasy, et cetera. So, uh, all the assignments are kind of geared towards that. Um, my late assignment policy is, let me quickly jump over to that. Um, I allow a late assignment up to three times in a semester. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm also going to be walking you through the online plan for this class. Uh, we live in a very volatile uh, kind of time, I think. So I want to give you all grace. If you cannot submit an assignment on time, just let me know that you will do it next week and you can take that late pass on that no questions asked i don't need to know why you want to take that late okay um i highly encourage uh, collaborating on assignments so if you know somebody in class or um you know um as the semester progresses i'm gonna um, break you out into different breakout rooms so that you can get to know each other and get to know the languages that you're working on um, you can always work together on assignment. Just let me know who you collaborated on. Just put all the names on top, just so that I know that, uh, you know, if I see two assignments that look really similar, I know that it's because you collaborated um, and not plagiarized, right? So just put everybody's name on top, whoever you collaborated with. Um, if, you, if you prefer to do assignments on your own, that's fine as well, right? No compulsion on working with other people. But if that helps, I highly recommend working with other people. You will have two exams, so that's where the rest of the 30% um, of your uh, grade is going to come. Uh, I am going to make this these exams open book. In the past, I have had closed book exams for uh, Link 151, but uh, depending on, again, when we get to Tuesday, March 22nd, which is after spring break, uh, depending on how the COVID cases are going to be in Sedgwick County at that time, uh, I'm going to decide if the midterm is going to be uh, you know, an online time test or a test that you can come and take in person, or I might do a blend of both. If you prefer to come and take it in person, you can do it in person. It's still going to be open book, uh, but I've decided to make both the uh, exams in this course uh, open book. Uh, they are non-cumulative, so midterm is going to be all on unit one. I will tell you what unit one is in a minute, and the final is going to be all on unit two. The final is actually on the final day of class. It's not in finals week, so just make a note of that. Um, already put these into your calendar so that you know that, you know, um, you, you know when to expect uh, these um, exams. And let's get to the final project and the final presentation. So this is worth 40% of your grade. Like I said, the big thing of this class is your own constructed language. 
for the final project, because it's 40% of your grade, what you will be doing is you will be creating a dictionary of your language. Um, well, a mini dictionary of your language, right? I, th I think I asked for 100 words or something like that. Um, I will give you more details as the semester progresses. Um, and, you know, that's a sample vocabulary. You have to tell me what the sound system of your language is. So you have to kind of create an, uh, a sound chart for your language, uh, both a consonant chart and a vowel chart, um, and a description of what kind of um, words exist in the language. Can your language do compounding? Can your language have inflections in it? Can your language do incorporation and all that kind of uh, you know, things? Give me what the basic word order of your language is, et cetera. A lot of you in the past, what I've seen is, um, you know, if you know other languages and uh, many of you know other languages, you fall back on the languages you know uh, for help and inspiration. Uh, if you don't know any other language, it's fine. A lot of you have also just created languages on the basis of English, but the main point that I'm looking for in this uh, final uh, project is creativity, right? I don't want to see a language that looks exactly like uh, English. I don't want to see a language that looks exactly like Spanish, right? If you want to create a language that mixes English and Spanish and create a new language that way, that's fine. But I don't want to see a grammar that looks exactly like the language that you speak, uh, for example. You can take inspiration from the languages you know, uh, you can read up, you can listen to other languages. Uh, so it's going to be a lot of fun. I want to you know, I, I want you to treat this as a fun assignment, a creative assignment. Um, it, my students really love having uh, fun with this assignment. So that's really what I'm looking for. Uh, have fun, okay, with this assignment. Um, we are going to be looking at certain constructed languages that already exist, such as Esperanto, Rajpan, Klingon, Dothraki for inspiration. Um, many of you might have watched a couple of TV shows and you know movie series that have these um, languages in them. So um, you know it, it's going to be a lot of fun. You will give an oral presentation in class um, towards the end, and that's going to be worth ten percent of your grade. Um, you will have a PowerPoint or a handout, um, and it's going to be a ten-minute presentation. Um, it's already been scheduled when we look at the weekly uh, kind of breakdown. And then I expect you to write it up and hand it over in the finals week. So May 12th. So you have until May 12th to create your final project. And that write up will be 30% of your assessment. So do you have any questions so far on any of the assignments or final project presentations or anything at all? Okay, good. All right, um, extra credit, uh, I often get asked this question. So I always put it on my syllabus that there might be chances when we have a linguistics talk, if we have a linguistics colloquium uh, this semester, uh, but nothing has been finalized as yet. So um, if there is a linguistics club event or um, you know a colloquium talk, uh, I often open those out as um, you know extra credit uh, opportunities, but I will let you know as a semester goes by. All right, so uh, linguistics at WSU, like I said, we have a brand new applied linguistics major at Wichita State. A um, couple of you are already in that major, so you know uh, if you have questions on the major, you feel free to ask your own classmates, or you can ask me. Um, the the requirements for the major just got changed, okay? So th th this is information for all the people who are already in the applied linguistics major. I streamlined the curriculum. So um, it's gonna be easier for you to finish. Now, th that, that's, that's the in short version of it. I will be sending out advising uh, emails to all of you. So uh, don't uh, worry about, you know, um, what those requirements are. I will send you out those uh, kind of, you know, uh, pages with, what you need to do in what time, etc., so that you can be stay on top of you know uh, the classes that you need to take in order to graduate in the applied linguistics major. Um, but like I said, we also have a linguistics minor, um, and if that's something that you want to consider, again, I see a lot of linguistic minors in this uh, class. But if that's something that you want to talk about, feel free to send me an email. Uh, either pop in during my office hours, or you can make an appointment to talk to me specifically about uh, your interest in the major or the minor. I'm happy to make that appointment. All right. So 
this class is listed as hybrid. So what we are going to do is we are going to meet synchronously uh, until it's safe to meet in person. Uh, most likely we will have a couple of lab sessions in person. Uh, I will assess the situation as the semester goes by, but uh, here is a Zoom link um, and I suggest that you bookmark it. Okay, let's get into the syllabus. All right, so this is the tentative uh, kind of schedule that I have. Unit one is features of language and a toolkit for designing and analyzing a language. So uh, today uh, we are reviewing syllabus and we are going to start on the first lecture, which is introduce language as a system. Um, and then on Thursday, we are gonna continue with that uh, lecture and look at the design features of language. Um, you have a reading uh, for next Thursday, which I will put up on Blackboard later today. Um, and next week, we are going to continue with design features as well as describing a language. And your first assignment is due on Feb 1st. So that's when you see your first assignment is due. Um, so which means I will hand out the assignment on 25th. Jan 25th is when I hand out the assignment and you will submit it uh, on February 1st. I will create the link on Blackboard so that you can just submit it directly on Blackboard. Um, so that's how it's going to be. January 25th, the assignment opens up. February 1st, it's due um, before class. So fe by February 1st, we get into the toolkits for language. We start looking at um, international phonetic alphabets. We start looking at sound organization. I know a couple of you have already done 315, so you already know all this. Um, ideally, it's best to take 151 and then take 315, but you know sometimes you do the reverse and that's okay. Uh, you kind of know all this. Uh, it, it's kind of like a refresher uh, for a couple of you who have taken 315 with me. Um, and then we'll get into structure of words and sentence structure and morphology. And we will do two case studies um, on designing a language. So these are constructed languages that already exist. And we will kind of look at how the creator of these languages created the language, what sound systems did they use, what morphology did they use, um, what were some of the design factors for designing um, the, that particular constructed um, language. And then we uh, go into language acquisition and variation, um, where I kind of tell you about the typology of different kinds of languages. We talk a little bit about world languages in that um, week. This is starting March, and that's when you have your assignment to view. Okay, so assignment two will uh, open out on February 22nd, Tuesday, and you will submit it on March 1st, right? So that's assignment uh, two. And then we get into uh, the second week of March. So we will watch a movie, The Linguist. Have any of you watched this movie before? Okay, in a couple of, okay. I see some head nods, uh, but not too many. Um, and you will do an assignment on that movie. It's kind of like a movie review. Um, so that's your assignment three. So for assignment three, that's gonna open up only on March 8th because you know it's directly connected to the movie. So I will give you the assignment on March 8th. You will watch the movie and then you will, I want you to submit this on Thursday just because we're going into spring break, but oh, wait. I miss something. Oh, sorry. So assignment four is movie review, right? So you do get one week to do that movie across spring break. Assignment three will be handed out on March 3rd, right? Right. Sorry about that. Um, so that's on language acquisition and variation. And that assignment three is due on March 10th. So March 3rd, it opens out on March 3rd, and you will submit it to me on March 10th. And then the movie review, you will take spring break and then summit that on March 22nd, which is a Tuesday and which is when you're gonna be taking your midterm as well, okay? So the midterm for this class is a little weird because it's after spring break. Um, so you kind of, you know, um, it, it, it's post the midterm mark of the semester. Um, so that's March 22nd, the midterm. I haven't decided, like I said, whether the midterm is going to be completely online or whether you can take it in person. We will assess the situation um, by the beginning of March and I will take a decision at that point. Um, and I will ask all of you if you have a preference, you know, whether you wanna take it online or in person. Um, so when we come to that, we can decide um, on the nature of the midterm, but it's gonna be open book, uh, no matter whether it's in person or um, online. 
once we finish the midterm, we get into unit two. And so this is language and its interfaces, the interdisciplinary nature of um, language. So we start with language and animal communication because language is truly one of the distinct, distinguishing factor between animals and humans, right? So we will get into animal communication. We will look at word communication, uh, primate communication, um, et cetera. So that's going to be two lectures on that. And then we're going to get into language and memory, brain and cognition. So this is when I talk about um, linguistics as interfacing with psychology, with CSD, communication sciences and disorders, with uh, philosophy, with neuroscience, et cetera. Um, and that's going to be two lectures as well. Um, and as well as language and mathematics, music, music and vision. Um, and then we have sign languages. Um, I have only one lecture on sign languages, but, you know, I leave this fluid, it depends on, you know, how we get through the material that we have. So there could be, you know, sign language that we start on April 12th and end on April 14th. So we will take it um, as it goes. And then you have another movie that you're going to watch, which is the Human Language Series uh, movie. This is on April 19th. So your assignment five is due on April 19th. It will open out on April 12th. That's your fifth assignment, April 12th. So you have only two assignments post midterm, right? So assignment five and the movie review, which is assignment six. Um, so April 12th, assignment five opens out. You submit that on April 19th. And the movie review, um, I will open that out on April 19th and it's due on April 26th. Um, I have given uh, three classes uh, to uh, class presentations. We might need only two classes instead of three. So again, we will assess that and I will um, include maybe like, you know, a lab session in there. Um, if you want to come in person to class and like, you know, meet other people and talk about um, your own constructed language, et cetera. So I kind of leave this April 21st class presentations as fluid, uh, depending on how many people we have and, you know, how many minutes we need for the class presentations. But April 26th and April 28th is when you will be presenting your constructed language in class. Okay, so that's week 15. And then you have your final exam review on May 3rd and your final exam on the final day of class, okay? The reason why I wanna do this is I want you to finish getting that exam out of the way so that you can then focus on your language, right? Because that is what's gonna be worth 40% of your grade. So I really, really want you to focus on in the final week, um, you know, your final project, which is gonna be due on May 12th. I will make a, um, a link available on Blackboard, you will just submit it on uh, Blackboard uh, directly on or before uh, May 12th. All right, so that was all that I had to talk about for the syllabus. Any questions on the syllabus or any other um, assignments or final project or anything that we covered uh, today in the syllabus? Okay, great. Um, this is up on Blackboard, like I said, so uh, feel free to uh, go over that. Now, let me walk you through the online plan. Um, is this is the syllabus that I opened out again. Oh, sorry, wrong file. So let me stop share and stop share again. Okay, there. All right. So. I have an online plan for this class, and uh, this as this is an online plan that I've created over the last two years. Uh, you know, after we pivoted um, online in March of 2020. So, like I said, I I think of myself as a really understanding professor, right? Because you know, I know that there is a lot going on for all of you, right? I mean, you have families to take care of, you have. Um, jobs to work and you have your own health to take care of. So these are my collective thoughts over the last two years, like I said. I want to create an online community because that's what we are doing by having a class uh, synchronously. So um, this is the safest way to do it. But if you get sick, I don't want you to worry about your assignments or final projects. Just take care of your health, okay? Don't worry about your deadlines. I will extend them if you are sick. I don't, you know, I don't even need to see a doctor's note for that. I trust you, okay? 
um, like I said, I've been at Wichita State for six years. So, you know, this is something that I have learned uh, over the years that it's, it's, it's good to give people grace. Okay, so that's, that's where I come from. Um, if you're sick, just let me know you're sick so that I know that, you know, you have not gone MIA, that, you know, there's something that you're dealing with, but just let me know. So we are going to do a synchronous format. So uh, please log into Zoom every Tuesdays and Thursdays at 9.30. Um, this Zoom link is going to work for the rest of the semester. Um, and these lectures are recorded. So I will put it up on Blackboard. Um, I will first put it up on YouTube so that I have automatic uh, closed captioning so that I can make it accessible to everybody. Um, and then I will put it up on Blackboard so that you can go back and you know, revisit it, et cetera. Uh, but again, like I said, you know, um, if, if you are unable to get on to the lecture, I'm not going to check attendance, okay? Uh, that's something that I threw out of the window once the pandemic happened. Uh, it does not make sense to me anymore to have attendance. So if you are well and you are okay to sit in front of the lecture, log in. Otherwise, you can always watch it asynchronously on Blackboard. I want to give you that option as well, okay? Um, so I have said your exams will be timed online test uh, just as a contingency backup uh, option. But like I said, um, I, I also want to assess the situation to see if you want to take it in person. Some of you might prefer to take it in person because I know that Blackboard can get really clunky and, um, you know, it... it I say two hours, but sometimes you need more than two hours to take the test. So, you know, we will assess this. Um, if I get sick, which is a possibility, like I said, I have uh, two children who are unvaccinated under five. So um, if, if, if I do get sick, uh, just keep submitting assignments according to your Blackboard due dates. I will make them available online. Um, and sometimes we might not be able to meet synchronously, but I will post asynchronous uh, content on Blackboard just so that you can be on top of things that are required for you in the class. Um, I will be creating discussion posts because I really want you to have that sense of community, um, especially when you're doing your final project. So, um, you know, I will open up discussion posts and, you know, feel free to respond. Feel free to even start your own discussion posts on Blackboard. Um, I will open up the ability for you to do that. Uh, is this the first online class for anybody on this Zoom? Okay, so if this is your first online class, there is a learning curve associated with it. So, you know, I'm happy to help you out. Anybody else on this, you know, uh, call will be happy to help you out as well. My office hours are on Tuesday between 11 and 12 and by appointment. So uh, for my office hours on um, between 11 and 12, you don't need to make an appointment. You can just drop in if you have a question on your final project or the syllabus, or you wanna to talk to me about linguistics, anything connected to the class, just drop in to my office hours. You don't need an appointment. If you can make it to my office hours, you do need an appointment to meet me. Just send me an email and we will work something up. All right, okay. So that was all that I had. This is also available on Blackboard, so you can um, read that. And now let's get into the first lecture uh, for today. Okay. There we go. All right. So this week, like I said, you have um, one chapter that I want you to read. It's uh, from Jackson and Stockwell, uh, chapter one. I will make this available as a PDF. Um, online on Blackboard, so you don't have to worry about uh, buying the book or uh, finding the chapter online. It will be available on, on, on Blackboard uh, at the end of this class. I will open it up on Blackboard. All right, so let's start by asking some uh, fundamental questions in linguistics. What is language? Feel free to just unmute yourself and answer because I probably won't be able to see you raising your hands, so. What is your idea of language? What is language? Landon here. I would say, in a somewhat simple way, language is the system of human communication. Okay, a system of human communication. So, um, me, if I can 
the thing is I cannot share this and pull up a whiteboard at the same time. Uh, let's open up a whiteboard. Okay, so you said system, right? My handwriting is usually not this bad. It's really difficult to write with that. Okay, maybe I should just open that. Okay, system, <laughs> that's better. Of <laughs> communication. Can you see every, it, can you see me typing? Can you see? Oh, no, can you not see the whiteboard? Can you see a system written in red? Yeah, we see the writing, but we don't see the typing. Oh, no. Okay, this is an issue that I've been having. Ah, you see now? There it is. Okay, got it. Okay, so system of communication. Anybody else? What is language? There are no right or wrong answers, okay? So feel free to jump in with whatever you think language is. Do you want me to call on names? I can do that. Uh, let's see, because I see Olivia's uh, face. Olivia, what do you think is language? Um, I was also thinking system of communication, but to go a little bit more in depth, I would say it's either verbal, manual, or like a combination of the two of those. Okay, so verbal, manual, combination of both. Okay. Great. Anybody else? This is Kelly. Uh -huh. um, I think that it's also um, a representation of thought. Representation of thought. Anybody else? Okay. We can't forget about written language too, and okay. the verbal manual. Written. Right. So, um, so verbal manual combination of both, and then you have um, written as well as verbal. So, okay. Anything else before I stop share on this and go back to my lecture slide? Okay. So, let's. Go back to uh... all right. So I think you know Landon and Olivia and a couple of you said that it's a system of communication, right? Very first, you know, uh, the first word, the key word that comes out of people's uh, mouth when you hear language is communication. We use it for communication, right? Uh, we don't have anybody from journalism here, but you know that's something that they often hear about in the school of journalism, right? How do we communicate? We communicate with language, right? Like duh. We exchange ideas, thoughts, desires, and promises in language. So yes, absolutely, it's a system of communication, right? Language can do so much and more, right? We dream in language, we sing in language, we express ideas in language. Uh, we promise in language. So there's a lot that language can actually do. But can we do all this without language? What do you think? Can we have ideas without language? And can we have thoughts without language? And can we promise somebody without actually promising them by saying, I, you know, I promise you without actually saying those words? What do you think? Yes or no? Yes. Yeah. So we can do it without language, yes? Well, without verbal language, yes, we can. Oh. Okay, okay. Without verbal language or without actually speaking, right? Um, okay, anybody else? Um, I mean, I think we can do it like completely without like any kind of language because like my dog can promise to the other dogs, if you come over to my food bowl, you know, I'm gonna, you know, fight you and they'll remember that. So I mean, they're having thoughts, um, they're having desires, they wanna get her food bowl, but she wants her food, um, she wants her bowl and then she can, you know, show them that, you know, over and over, if you do this, this is gonna be the consequence. 
Mm -hmm. um, and I mean, babies can do that. Um, and I mean, at that point, they don't speak a language necessarily. Um, yeah. So, I mean, yeah, we could do all that without any kind of language, even, you know, uh, you know, like a sign language, even without that. That's a, that's a great answer. And, you know, we will uh, talk a little bit about language acquisition when we get into that uh, language acquisition week. Um, how do babies pick up language, right? Um, like I said, I have two children uh, under the age of four. Um, so I have a baby who's really picking up language right now. So, you know, all that he can say, he's 16 months. So all that he can say is up and out. And he uses a lot of pointing. So, you know, he points to what he wants. And then I have a three and a half year old toddler who, uh, that, that's my daughter, but she behaves like she's a teenager. So she behaves like she's 14 or 15 years old, right? And she makes up her own words. I'm not kidding you. So <laughs> she makes up her own words. She's into rhyming. That's the thing that she loves doing these days. And she makes up her own words when she rhymes. And I'm like, yeah, that's exactly not how rhyming works, but you know, it's, it's all good for now. So th 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 we will get into that language acquisition bit um, in that week, but you know, um, animal communication, we will get into that as well um, post midterm when we get into unit two, but you know, how do dogs and cats communicate with us? Not through verbal language, right? Or the language that we humans communicate with. So gestures, right? We talk a lot with our hands. I mean, you can see me using my hands a lot as, as, as I'm talking. Um, you can gesture and, you know, you can communicate things with your gesture, body language, right? There's no verbal aspect to it, but you can communicate a lot by using just gestures. Emojis, right? I mean, there's a, there's a lot of work right now on emojis and how, um, how you can just write entire texts and entire emails using emojis but is that language is that verbal language no it's not right um it i mean i can teach an entire class on emojis right the linguistics of emojis it's a completely separate class but what about that what, what are your thoughts on are is emoji part of language do you use emojis when you text or when you write I don't know if I would classify I mean, it as language itself, but I would say that it definitely is a supplement to language. It might um, be like an expansion feature mm -hmm. that yeah. adds to a language. Mm -hmm. Yep, that's a great answer. Can you also tell me your name before you talk, just because I don't uh, like- Sorry, that, that was Kelly. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, I know you, Kelly, but I'm still getting to know everybody. So if you can just identify yourself before you speak, that will be great. Thank you. Um, this is Niall. And hey, Amber. I think, um, and I think that like emojis, you can communicate with uh, language with emojis because if somebody else understands it, that's really all that matters. If they can understand what you're trying to convey the meaning of. So even if it's emojis, if somebody else can understand it, then you are communicating. And so, yes, you can communicate without language. You can share your ideas, thoughts, desires, you know, promises um, with different emojis. So if somebody else can understand, I think <clears throat> that's really all that matters if the meaning is shared. Mm -hmm. I would like to play devil's oh, advocate. Oh, sorry, Landon, I think Amber wanted to go first. Go if I can put you, yes, okay. Thanks, Landon. Amber, go ahead. Um, honestly, I think with uh, emojis and stuff like that, it's a lot of times uh, used for to keep miscommunication from happening as well because it helps project tones mm -hmm. because you can say a sentence that to you would sound normal but can be perceived as angry or sad or manipulative and so the mode kind of helps show what tone you are actually meaning as well. right yeah i i sometimes do not understand emojis i'll be very honest with you um i'm like okay does this does this mean this is, is, is she trying to tell me this i'm not entirely sure there's a i think there's a lot of ambiguity uh and gray area and i don't know if it comes with age uh, but, but, you know, um, there, 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 are, there are times when I've second guessed myself and I've had to ask somebody who's like much younger to me and be like, is, it, that's, is this what she means? So, yeah, so I definitely see that Amber, so. 
Landon, do you want to go now? Sure. Uh, I was going to play devil's advocate a little bit and say that emojis, um, the, you can only understand emojis if you have language already, because you're interpreting these symbols as, as words, right? When you see that, when you see that emoji face, you're thinking, hmm, and that hmm is a word. Right. right. When you see, when you see the eggplant emoji, you're thinking the word eggplant. <laughs> right. Yeah. Or maybe a different word. But. That's interesting. That's interesting because I'm thinking of all the cross linguistic bilingual aspects of that. So, you know, um, would two people like say, let's take a bilingual person, right? Um, who's fluent in both the languages what interpretation would you give to this emoji in language one versus language two? Would that interpretation change across languages? Um, that's, it's, it's a really interesting research project if you're, if you're looking for research projects to do and research ideas to do, because I haven't seen a lot of papers on that. Uh, but that would be a pretty cool undergraduate research project, um, interpretation of emojis across different languages. Because, you know, um, I can see how it translates to in English because majority of emoji users, you know, there's a lot of emoji users in English, but what about Japanese, right? Or what about Arabic, a uh, language that reads differently from English and all that. So yeah, that that's, I, I like that you brought up that aspect, Landon, uh, that I think there needs to be more research be before we can kind of sub subsequently say whether that's true or not. Um, I would treat that as a research hypothesis. And, you know, if you're interested in doing a research project on that, be my guest, anybody, okay? All right, what constitutes language? Now, every language has sounds, right? I mean, uh, you can isolate these different sound systems, b, b, t, s, m, right? These are individual sounds and depending on whether you take these sounds and put them in different words, you're gonna get different meaning, right? So if I take a word hat, uh, that's, a, a word with one meaning and I change that to bat, you get a different uh, word with a different meaning. So you have different words in languages such as apple, boy, rainbow. Words can be simple words or they can be complex, right? So rainbow is a complex word because um, you're combining two different words together to create a blended uh, compound word. Uh, but words can also be really, really complicated. So let's... Um, Let's stop share and let's open up a whiteboard. Um, okay, so let's uh, clear. Um, let me, I'm gonna write something um, and I'm gonna uh, ask you to guess what it is, okay? All right. Have you ever seen this before? My guess is no. Okay. What do you think this is? Is is it a word? Is it a sentence? Is it a phrase? Is it gibberish? What is it? What, what, what? As a person who has never seen this before, how is your brain and cognition interpreting this? Can you, maybe we can all put answers into the chat session so that, you know, we, I can access the chat session. Oh, there it is. Okay. So your guesses could be word or, you know, <laughs> Landon is giving you all too much information. <laughs> and that is right. Landon is on the right track. Okay. Kelly says word. Okay. Olivia says is the name of a town. Word. Okay. Megan says word. Amber says single word. Word. Okay. 
abbreviation of a long phrase. Melody says uh, a long phrase. Okay. Okay, so I think, you know, word, okay, Niall says sentence, compound word, okay. I think word seems to be winning uh, at this point. Okay, let me try to close up chat. Okay. Uh, so what this is, is I'm not, I'm not able to close up chat, sorry. I'm just gonna, okay. All right, let me open up the whiteboard again. All right, so this is one word. So you are all right, okay? This is one word in my mother tongue, which is a Dravidian language, uh, absolutely spot on, uh, Landon. The language is Malayalam, okay? And the, the word is basically, it means must be writing. Okay, so that, that's, that's the meaning um, of this word, must be writing. Um, but from the context, you can also interpret who is writing. So you can say, he must be writing, even though there is no word for he in this, set, in this word at all. But, you know, it's like Spanish. If you have a, a O ending, it's masculine. And if you have a A ending, it's feminine. So you can kind of interpret that from the context. Uh, but let me actually split this up into the different morphemes for you. So all right, so that is how many different morphemes combine to create this word. This kind of language formation or word formation is called as agglutination. It's basically just gluing up, gluing up. I don't have any Lego blocks around me. Usually I do because my, my, my kids love playing with Lego blocks, but it's literally putting one Lego block on top of the other, on top of the other to create like a bigger structure, right? That's, that's exactly what I'm doing here, right? This comes naturally to me. This is my first language but this could be a strategy for your final project, for your constructed language, right? So if you wanna steal things, if you wanna make notes uh, for what you might wanna do for your language, uh, feel free to do that. So this is literally must be writing, but you don't see things like this in English or English type of languages. You don't see that in Spanish, you don't see it in uh, Romance because that's not a feature, uh, a word formation feature of um, romance uh, type of languages. Okay. Um, Ephraim says something, uh, is, is that a word? I think he, Ephraim, can you tell us what that is? Ephraim, can you hear me? Yeah, sorry. Okay. Um, yeah, it looks like a word to me. Okay, no, I, did you type something <laughs> in the chat right now, which is a word or is that, I saw something in the chat. So I just want to make sure that- Oh, have I? Oh, I must have been my cat on my keyboard. Okay. <laughs> well, tell your cat that she or he just constructed their first word in a new language because that I, I was trying to see if that's actually a word or not in a language that I know and I didn't know, so yeah. Congratulations to your cat. Your cat now speaks human language. So, um, all right. So let's go back to the lecture slide. I know that we have about uh, five minutes or so left. So, right. So we were talking about what constitutes language. Um, so words, as you can see, I have examples from English here, but you can see how different languages can do word formation differently. And that's going to be helpful for you in your own constructed language. So I want you to keep in mind that you can kind of, you know, uh, read up about different word formation processes. We will talk uh, about word formation processes when we get into morphology as well. And then sentences, the boy with the apple saw the rainbow, right? Um, a, a straightforward. Uh, sentence in English. Uh, but again, different languages could do this differently depending on um, 
whether you have the subject first or the object next and the verb, or whether you have the subject, the verb, and the object, etc. So, but what about sign language? I mean, we've been talking about uh, verbal language, we've been talking about written language, but what about sign language? Do you, do you all consider that as a separate language system? Yep, all the people who know sign language are nodding. Uh, what about people who may not speak or sign a language? Not speak a sign language, sign a sign language. What do you think? Is, is sign language a separate language? Uh, if somebody can access that chat when I'm sharing the slideshow, I can't read things in chat. So I'm sorry about that. But if somebody can read out what that chat says, I, I know there's something in chat, but I cannot see it. Oh, I just said yes. yes. <laughs> okay. okay, good. Thanks, Amber. Thanks, Landon. <laughs> uh, so yeah, so th this is, um, you know, all the signs of the alphabet in sign language. Um, to go back to what Kelly said during her introduction, this is American Sign Language, that's ASL. Um, there are about 200 sign languages in the world. So um, sign language itself is really complex, um, really diverse, it's very different. It has a different grammatical system. Very often people think that, um, you know, it's similar to English, it's not, even ASL is not similar to English. Um, again, I can teach an entire different class in sign language, like all about sign languages, but we will talk a little bit about it in unit two. Um, and, you know, like I said, we have more learned people on this call, like Kelly and people, you know, who've been interpreting for years. So I might call on you uh, to help me out with portions of the class, just because you know much more than me at this point. So, and what about emojis? See, I just did the boy with the apple right saw so the rainbow but it doesn't look anything like the sentence that I actually wrote right in English would you if I hadn't told you that this was the emoji version of that sentence would you have thought that this was the boy with the apple saw the rainbow no exactly yeah so so there are things that emojis can do but there are also limitations uh to emojis as you can see right um again you can uh kind of guess to see what this is and you know there might be multiple interpretations to it but yeah th there's a lot of interpretation uh, open interpretation left for emojis so the, the point that i want to drive home is this language is hierarchical right uh it's really really crucial to understand that because when you look at emojis when you look at this uh emojis that i have over here it's very linear right there's absolutely no structure there's absolutely no hierarchy in this uh, there's a boy, there's an apple, there's a rainbow, okay? The crucial difference between this and language is that language, whether it's English or Spanish or German or Italian or any other language, is completely hierarchical. So I can create sentences with hierarchy in it. And if I change around meaning, and some of you have already done that uh, in 3.15 with your syntax assignment, Yes, that assignment from hell that I often give people, uh, where I give a sentence and I ask you to draw five different uh, syntactic tree structures for it, uh, which sums a lot of people actually. But it's really fun because it talks about that hierarchy in language and how moving things around in language can actually change the meaning. Um, so for example, in this sentence, the boy with the apple saw the rainbow, um, I can change, change this around to say, the rainbow saw the boy with the apple to have a completely different meaning. Whether it's plausible or not, you can still understand the meaning and the meaning is completely different from the boy with the apple saw the rainbow, right? All right, so I think this is a good place to stop. We have about one minute uh, for questions. So uh, let me stop share and I will open this out to questions. Any, um, anything that you wanna clarify? Olivia? Did you want us to read chapter one before Thursday or before Tuesday? Uh, well, ideally before Thursday, but if you cannot get to it, that's fine. Uh, just do it before Tuesday because I know that between now and Thursday, there isn't much time. So, nothing of what I say in class is going to be too crucial for you. Like, I'm not going to test you on what you have read. Okay. So, like I said, take everything easy, be easy on yourselves. Okay. I, I, I really, really want to see your constructed language. 
that's what I care about. Okay, Kelly? Yes, um, a question about the final project. And you said that you will want a write-up uh -huh. of that. Yeah. Um, do, is there a particular format for the write-up? Yeah, I, I, I think I make it available um, and I can do it early on in the semester if that's gonna help. Um, I give you sort of like a template on what I want. And I also okay. make available um, previous final projects so that you can take a look at some of the best projects um, that I've, I've, I've kind of seen. Um, I also um, host uh, the Constructed Language uh, Workshop. Uh, some of you might have attended it. Uh, it it's, it's, I think, in its third or fourth uh, year right now. So it's basically all the best um, projects that I get uh, they tend to make a presentation to the entire Wichita State campus. Uh, but this year, I might do it differently. I might have all of you do a presentation on the workshop uh, because we are such a small class uh, this time. But I haven't, I haven't thought about that. But I will make that available on Blackboard, Kelly. OK, thank you. OK, we are out of time. So it was great seeing all of you. I will see you all on Thursday. Bye. <laughs>